Hello everyone, welcome back to Xcoding with Albion. In the previous videos, we have successfully built the complete iOS news app with full support of iPadOS UX adaptivity. It runs pretty well on all variants of iPhones and iPads. In this course, we'll continue to expand the app by implementing native macOS target with Swift UI. Although you can just follow me to code along, I really recommend all of you to watch the previous two videos if you want to understand and implement the news app from scratch. Before we begin, I want to provide some information and background about the current state of running iOS app on macOS. Actually, the iOS app that we have built on the previous video is capable to run on macOS. Currently, there are two possibilities to run iOS app on macOS. First, for Apple Silicon best max hardware the app will run without any modification it will run the way it is as on ios and it won't have any access to any mac os specific apis for intel or apple silicon best mac hardware we can target the ios app to run on mac os using catalyst it still uses ui kit under the hood but we will have the capability to use additional mac os apis that Apple made available on Catalyst. In this video, we will create a full native macOS app using Swift UI. It will use all of macOS native AppKit UI components. Along the way, we will also going to implement some of the macOS specific features such as custom menu bar command with keyboard shortcut and focusable values, custom app preferences window, custom context menu with right click, native share picker menu presentation, and finally, touch bar integration. I really feel encouraged when working on this project, as it enables iOS developer like me to build native macOS app using just a single framework, which is Swift UI. If you have completed the previous two tutorials on building iOS and iPadOS news app, you can just continue to code along. If you haven't, you can download the starter project from the GitHub repository I have provided at the description. Please open the folder named Build on macOS app with Swift UI and News API. Select Starter and open the Xcode project using at least Xcode 13 Beta 3 and macOS 12 Beta 3 Monterey. It is required to use macOS 12 Beta 3 to run, as the async await feature requires the OS runtime support that only present on macOS 12 as of right now. So, without further ado, let's begin by opening the project in Xcode and start coding. Okay, so for our first task, let's create a new macOS target for the current Axion News Xcode project. Let's click on this axionews.xcode project. And actually, to create a new target, there are two ways. First, we can select this Xenius project, and here in the target list, we can click on this plus button. The other way around is using this menu bar, select File, New, and then click Target. We're going to select Mac OS, and then type App, instead of Filter, Search Field and then select this app give it the name of Axion News Mac and then make sure this interface is using Swift UI and just uncheck the use core data and include tests and then finally click finish okay this should create a new target here inside the targets list and here is also with the new folder for us with the default uh, application and content view placeholder. It also creates a new scheme for us, XCN News Map, that we can select here. So now we can just try to build and run it for the first time. Okay, now it's running. Okay, here as you can see, this small uh, window with a hello world this is basically our app so this is the default placeholder content view so that's basically it for creating the macOS target 
Next, we need to make some additional configuration for this new Mac OS target. So if you look closely here, the name of the app is Action News Mac. This is not very readable to the user. So let's change this. To do that, uh, go to the Action News project here. Select Action News Mac from the target list. And then click on the build settings. And then search for name here. Scroll down, find the packaging section. Here, we need to change this product name. This rep represents the title of the app. So let's change this to Axion News. Okay. So make sure this product module name is still using this Axion News Mac. Otherwise, it will fail to build the app as it will be looking into this Axion News Mac when building the project. Okay, so for the next task is we need to add the signing and capabilities. So actually for the Mac OS app, by default, you won't be able to fetch data from server. It will block you. To do that, we need to add new capability. Select this plus capability and click on this app sandbox. And to enable the outgoing connections client, we need to check this checkbox here. This should enable the internet access to fetch the data from the news API. And we need to go to the info playlist next by clicking on this info tab. So as many of the articles also provide an image URL that will be shown. Some of the URL is still using the HTTP protocol instead of HTTPS. By default, Mac OS won't load the URL starting with HTTP. We need to add additional key here, which is the app transport security settings. So this is a dictionary. Click here to expand this dictionary and then click add. And then we need to add this hello arbitrary loads and then set the value as yes. This will enable the app to fetch data from the HTTP endpoint. I think that's all for the configuration of the Mac OS target. Now let's move on to begin implementing the app. So as we already have the models, few models and all views as well the news API service inside the Axia News iOS folder here. We should be able to reuse all of these model, view models, and some of the views to be included here in the Axion News Mac target. To do that, first let's just create a new uh, folder here. Just select from this Axion News at the top, and then you can type option command N. Give it a name of Axion News Share. And you can also create a new folder by selecting file from the menu bar and then new and then select group. Make sure to, to do that from this top navigation. So it has the same hierarchy as the, the one in here. Okay. Now we need to create several folders here. The Axion is shared. Let's create models. And then few models, API, and let's see what else. I think that's all. Now let's begin the migration from the Axion News folder here. So for the model, let's select multiple files here. here. To do that, you can just hold the command key when selecting the item. Okay, first one is this article. Just remove it, remove this first. Select article and then news API response, category, data store, and menu item. There are five models. Okay. Now let's move this to the models folder in the Axion News shared. Okay. And next, let's move the few models. For the few models, we can just Move three all of the items here. We'll be using all of them. Okay, drag it. 
here to the view models in the action news shirt okay now the view model inside the action news is empty let's just delete this and the next one is the api just only one api just move this and delete the one in the action news and finally we need to also move this news json to the action news shirt just put this in the root level now we need to select all the files inside the action news shirt folder here make sure to select all of this and then open the right sidebar here and then select this file inspector and as you can see here the target membership is only check for the axia news ios target for now let's also check the axia news mac target here so this will be also targeting the mac OS target okay now let's make sure to build the app make sure it is successful okay there is no uh, build fail error here let's also do the same for the ios target by changing the scheme to make sure we are not broken anything okay nice change back to xn use max scheme okay uh i think this is all for the initial migration we will uh migrate the views one by one later when we implement uh, the features in mac os otherwise if we import it now the build will fail as there are some api that is only available in ios okay that's it for this migration task next let's move on to implement the main ui for the mac os app for the main ui the mac os app will be quite similar to the ipad OX ux with master detail navigation sidebar list and grid list for showing the news the main difference will be the search ui as the search bar is now located inside the sidebar list itself similar to the app store on mac os now let's start by creating a new folder inside the axia news mac folder here give it a name of use and then create a new cvui view file name sidebar list view to represent the list items, we are going to use the same menu item enum that we have created before when implementing the iPad OX UX. This enum contains three cases search, save, category with associate value of category enum, and it has several uh, complete properties for text and system image. Now let's go back to the sidebar list view. So basically, we need a binding here. Let's declare a binding and give it a name of selection with the type of menu item dot ID. Make it optional. The actual value for the menu item ID is actually a string, which is the raw value of the menu item enum. We'll use this value to bind the selection of menu item inside the list. Let's fix this preview by passing a constant value of binding with new for handling navigation to the selected menu item detail view on the sidebar list we are going to do it programmatically basically we have a hidden navigation link with empty view then the destination view will be based on the selection binding value of the menu item each of the row in the list is a label that has tag modifier with the item id when the user clicks the system will update the selection binding with the tag value, thus invoking the navigation to the destination view of the selected item. Okay, so now let's declare a private func first, name view for menu item, and then for the parameter, it will be just a single parameter of menu item, and the return type will be an opac view that we can declare using this sum keyword. So here we need to use view builder property wrapper here to enable the structural identity based on the condition. For that we are going to use the switch statement item. In case of saved, 
we're going to return just a uh, text pass order for now just save and then search text search and finally category let's grab the associate value of category enum and let's just print the category category dot text using string interpolation okay next we need to create a computed property for generating the navigation link we need to also use view builder so let's declare private far navigation link with the type of opac view here we need to check whether the selected menu item exists we need to initialize it using this menu item in a initializer passing the menu item dot id which is the selection binding okay and for the navigation link we just need to initialize it using the destination i think this one so for the destination we can just get it from this view for menu item method okay view for menu item we can pass the selected menu item and let's just clean this up and for the tag let's pass the selected menu item dot id and for selection we need to pass the binding selection and for the label which is the view i think we need to pass it with dollar sign as this is binding and for the content view as we don't want this to be shown we need to declare this using empty view okay so for the next one let's declare a method that output a list row that we will be using later when we are going to show the items inside the list so here just declare a private func list row item menu item as the parameter and return type of an opac view and let's just use a label here i want to use this title icon for the title let's just print the item the text and let's add a little bit of padding leading of four so this will give a extra bit of horizontal space between the text and the image and for the icon let's just use this image system name then pass the item system image and i think that's it now let's add additional modifier here set the font as title and set the padding vertical padding to four to give a, a bit of extra vertical space between the rows okay now we have all the components needed to implement the set bar list view body okay so here inside the body to make the hidden programmatic navigation view works we need to use cstack as the container view inside the cstack declare the navigation link property as the first view let's also add an opacity modifier passing zero to make this fully invisible next we need to declare the list and passing the selection binding to the selection parameter we will have two sections first one containing single item of saved articles second one is section containing all the categories of the news so let's declare uh, the first section using the content header initializer for the content here we can just invoke this list row passing menu item dot save and make sure to also add the tag modifier passing the menu item dot save dot id so this selection binding can be updated when the user click on the row 
and for the header let's pass a text and give it a name of action news that's it for the first section now for the second section let's also declare it using the content header and inside the content we need to use for each and then pass it the category dot menu items so this is the category all the cases of the category enum that has, is converted to the menu item category and then here we just need to invoke list row passing the item make sure to add the tag also using the large zero dot id and for the header let's pass a text and pass category string okay and let's also add additional modifier to the list list style and let's pass it sidebar there are no build errors let's navigate to the content view the tree file inside the SN news map here we need to declare the root view of the app as navigation view and inside the navigation view we just need to declare the sidebar list view passing the selection binding okay we still don't have this now let's add it let's declare a scene storage and pass item selection string as the key and make this private give it the name of selected menu item id the type will be menu item dot id optional so basically when we declare a property using the scene storage property wrapper whenever we assign the value to this property this will be persisted to the disk for each scene and you may be thinking what is the difference between the app storage property wrapper and the scene storage so mainly the differences is the app storage is persisting the value to the global user defaults while the scene storage is persisting this scene storage for each scene for the case of mac os it will be on each of the window this is very important for mac os as on mac os a single app can run on multiple windows we want this value to be mutually exclusive for each of the window now let's declare a proxy binding to access this so let's declare a private var give it a name of selection binding with the type of menu item dot id optional okay and then for the proxy binding let's declare a binding with a gather and setter for the gather we just need to return the selected menu item id if it is nil let's provide a default value using the nil coalescing operator the default value will be the menu item dot category general and for the setter we need to check whether the new value is not nil okay we didn't exist we just need to ass uh, assign this selected menu item id with the new value okay now we have the selection binding let's fix this adding this in now we can just pass this using this selection no need to add the dollar sign prefix as this is not using binding property wrapper okay now we can try to build and run the app for the first time okay okay this window is shown but the initial size is very small let's resize this okay drag it down okay okay the sidebar list is shown we can also resize this sidebar list by hovering on top of this divider and drag it now let's try to navigate between each of the menu items let's click save okay it shows save text in the detail view nice top headlines category top headlines health sports technology okay so i think there's an issue here as you can see here the font is too big let's fix this by navigating to the sidebar list view i think i have mistakenly assigned, assigned it to the title it should be title 2 okay let's try again 
okay now the font size of the menu items looks good so another thing here if you see here on this section so actually there's this disclosure indicator that we can use to collapse and expand the section so actually i want to make this non no the sections non collapsible by the user to do that i can just add this collapsible modifier and pass false okay oh, let's try to build and run okay now when we hover in the at the top reception there will be no disclosure indicator and we cannot collapse the section anymore there are several things that we can improve to the current master detail sidebar implementation first we need to constrain our app window size so the user doesn't have to resize the app to the bigger size when they run the app for the first time we also need to constrain the minimum size of the window itself so the ui is shown properly second we need to constrain the minimum width of the setbar list to avoid any truncation for the menu items inside the setbar list and third we need to add the setbar toggle button on the toolbar and provide menu bar command to toggle setbar with keyboard shortcut so with that the user should be able to toggle to expand and collapse the sidebar list now let's begin uh, to constrain the app window size let's navigate to the content view in xian news mac folder to do it to do this it should be pretty simple we just need to constrain the root view of the app which is the navigation view let's add a frame modifier and then we need to pass mean width of 1000 and mean height of 386 i think this value should be good for our ui now let's move on to the sidebar list view to limit the minimum resizable value width of the sidebar list here we can just add the frame with mean width of 220 so actually as when i'm making this video i cannot find any api to limit the maximum resistible width of the sidebar list so if you know how to do it please provide any comment below while we're in here let's also add a top padding here with the default value this should make uh, the ui looks a bit cleaner later when we implement the search bar inside the sidebar list okay now let's try to build and run the app now let's try to resize the window okay now the minimum width is constrained to 1000 point and the height is constrained to 386 points and now let's try to resize this sidebar list okay now we cannot go narrower than the 220 points the user should be able to collapse this if we pull this all the way to the left okay currently it's very hard to expand this sidebar list so now let's try to implement the toggle sidebar button inside the menu bar as well as inside the toolbar so let's begin by adding a toggle sidebar menu menu item here in the menu bar and to implement that it's actually pretty simple first we need to go to the main entry point of the app in this case this xn news mac app .swift. okay and we just need to add the comment modifiers to the window group here we just need to provide the built-in sidebar commands so these are built-in set of commands for manipulating windows sidebars so we just need to declare this and it should work let's try to run this okay as you can see now in the menu bar there's this view click click it and now there's a toggle sidebar here let's try to click nice the sidebar list is shown 
if you can see here there's a shortcut uh, keyboard here it is option command s let's try to toggle the shortcut option command s nice now we can toggle the sidebar using keyboard shortcut or pressing from this menu bar next let's add the toggle sidebar toolbar item now let's navigate to the content view in Excel news map and here to add a toolbar we just add the toolbar modifier on the sidebar list okay let's use this one and then inside the view closure just declare toolbar item and for the we're going to use this for the toolbar item placement let's pass navigation and for the content let's use a button let's use this one action and label for the label let's just use the image with the system name of sidebar dot left okay now we need to toggle the sidebar for that let's just create a private method private fun toggle sidebar okay so to toggle the sidebar there is no current official shift ui way to do this so basically we need to use the app kit api it's a little bit of hack there's currently no official documentation to do this and it might break in the future so but for now it should work for our use case so basically first we need to retrieve the app for the shared app instance and then retrieve the key window that that is currently receiving the keyboard events or in focus and then we're going to access the first responder okay and now we just can invoke try to perform in this case we're going to pass a selector and it is going to be ns split view controller dot toggle sidebar okay just pass nil to the width parameter and now let's pass this here let's just change this a bit using this toggle sidebar and then this to make it a look a bit cleaner okay now let's try to build and run okay nice as you can see here we have the sidebar item the sidebar button in the toolbar now let's try to click mm, nice it works it toggles the sidebar let's try it again nice okay that's it for the sidebar master detail navigation implementation we'll be revisiting this sidebar list and content fuel back later when we want to implement the search feature now let's move on to the next task okay now let's move on to the next task which is to show the news grid list for the selected menu item category for this we are going to reuse the same views as the one that we use for the ios target but we will add additional ui adjustment for mac os target this is now easier with the introduction of modifier conditional compilation in xcode 13. now let's go back to the xcode and we need to migrate several views from the xcode news ios target here into the xcode news shirt okay so now in the xcode news shirt folder create a new folder named views and then we need to select several views from the action news ios folder so first one is article row view then article list view news tab view empty placeholder view and then retry view let's drag this into the views folder in the action news shirt okay now let's select all of these files and make sure to check the XCN News Mac, Mac target membership here. This checkbox. So now, if we try to build this project, as you can see here, it will fail. 
because there are several API that is only available in iOS. As you can see here, the horizontal size class environment, the user interface size class, UI activity view controller, and UI application. So now let's fix this one by one. First one is let's navigate to the new step view. So basically to compile a specific portion of code only in a specific OS, we can use the conditional compilation macro here. We just need to use this hash pound if and then use this OS. And here we can pass the name of the OS. And now I'm going to pass iOS here. So I'll make this environment only available for the iOS target. I think this should resolve the build issue for Mac OS. And now the navigation by our items is unavailable on Mac OS. Here we can just use the same conditional compilation to only compile this on iOS, make this available only in iOS. Okay. And here in the navigation bar items. So let's just make this method only available in iOS. Okay. I think this should resolve all the build uh, issues here. Try to build. Okay. Okay. I don't see any build issues inside this new step view. So let's move on to the next view. Let's navigate to the article list view here. And let's start from this environment. Make this only available on iOS. Okay. And here, this sheet containing the Safari view. So actually for Mac OS, I don't want to present a model sheet. I just want to redirect the user to the Safari when the user taps on an article. So basically we can just ask Safari to open the URL. So let me also wrap this if OS is iOS. Only then we show the sheet with Safari view. Okay. Now this list view. Now this will only available in Mac OS. So let's wrap this list view. It OS iOS. Only available in i on in iOS. Okay. Now okay. Now let's move on to this root view. So basically here we also need to use this conditional compilation macro if OS iOS. Let's just use this statement here. And then we can add additional condition. Else if OS for Mac OS, we can pass this Mac OS. For Mac OS, I want to return the grid view. Okay. Let's move on to this on tap gesture. So basically here, let's just move this out into another method let's declare private func handle on tap gesture so here let's just use the conditional compilation if os ios and else if os make os Okay, so if it is iOS, I'm just going to assign this selected article. And in case of Mac OS, I'm going to use this shared NS workspace and then invoke the open URL. You can just pass the. So actually, we need the article as the parameter. 
and pass the article okay this will open the safari app and then redirect to the url that we pass here article url okay so as this selected article state is only available on ios let's just move it also here to only available on ios okay let's try to build okay there are two more build issues here related to the color as you can see here it's using the ui kit ui color which is not available in mac os as mac os is using ns color instead of ui color so for now let's just wrap this if os ios and and if same for this we'll add the custom styling for mac os a bit later okay let's try to build okay there are no build errors in this file now and finally we need to move to article row view okay let's begin from top for the SAS environment horizontal SAS class let's wrap it to only available in ios and here in the body let's also have this if os ios return the current one else if os mac os we need to return this one the one with the geometry reader okay now what else this one so this async image frame custom modifier use this horizontal size class which is not available on mac os let's also wrap this if os ios else if os mac os so for mac os let's just Assign it with the frame modifier passing hard coded height of 180. Okay. And here, let's just wrap this inside the if OS iOS conditional compilation. Okay. Okay. There are these. Let's wrap this file private extension also into a conditional compilation only for ios okay now this is the last one here this ui activity fee controller and ui application is only available on ios so let's wrap this okay now let's try to build command b okay now the build is successful okay so now before we run and see the results we need to add this to the setbar list view inside the view for a mini item and for the category case we need to return this new step view passing the category okay now let's try to build and run okay it is working now but the api key is invalid so make sure to get the api key from the news api.org and just navigate to the news api.swift and then just pass the api key to this private lit api key constant okay so i have put my api key that i get from news api.org now let's try to run it Okay, hmm, it crashed. As you can see here, file error, no observable object of type article bookmark view model found. Okay, so basically it crashed because as you can see here in the article row view, it uses this environment object to get to get the article bookmark view model. So we basically need to inject this. And we are going to inject that in the XCN News Mac app.swift.
let's declare a state object let's make it private and give it a name of bookmark vm with a type of article bookmark v model and for the initial value i'm just going to assign assign this using the singleton as this is this article bookmark view model is a singleton and to inject this i just need to use this environment object bookmark view model passing it and now let's try to build and run mm, nice it shows the articles in the grid now let's try to change the category hmm it doesn't work when changing the menu item category so basically here see if ui is confused whether to update the ui when changing the category and it is pretty easy to fix we just need to provide an explicit identifier using the id passing the category dot id and now let's try it again okay sports top headlines okay business technology okay so whenever i select the menu item the content is updated properly okay so that's it for this now let's move on to the next task which is to provide additional enhancement for the grid list ui so it looks amazing on mac os so let's adjust the article row view fonts currently those fonts looks pretty small so let's go back to xcode and if we get to the article row view dot swift and let's scroll down to this text passing the article title so now let's add an additional conditional modifier here for ios if os ios we are going to just use the current headline and else if os mac os we're going to pass title to and add additional bold styling and limit will be the same and now for the article description text let's also add additional conditional modifier let's pass this just use the default font and this line limit of 2 for ios and for mac os let's set the font to body and also let's add the foreground foreground color foreground style as secondary actually uh, here for the title let's also add the foreground style modifier with a passing primary and now for the description text i want to set the line limit to three and here for this spacer so actually in mac os i want to add a divider between this between the description text and the this horizontal stack containing the buttons so in mac os i'm just going to declare a spacer and then declare a divider and declare a divider and let's also add a padding bottom with a value of 12 okay and now here for the button style i want to set it as borderless for mac os so let's refactor this a bit and move this to the edge tag so both buttons can inherit this without having to declare their own button style so here if os ios still using the border if the os is mac os else if let's set the button style to borderless as well setting the image scale to large 
Okay, now let's try to build and run. Okay. Okay, now the the font looks good now. Now let's move on to style this background color for the article row view and the grid itself. Okay, so now let's navigate to the article list view here. So in here, I want to add additional condition compilation for macOS. I'll see OS, Mac OS. So for the frame height here, I'm going to just set this to 60 height only for iOS. And for Mac OS, let's move this. So actually the order of this frame and background is important. So make sure it's on the top of this background. And for the Mac OS, I'm going to pass height of 376 and for the background actually we need to determine the current color sim whether it's light or dark mode to do that let's just declare an additional environment here for mac os declare environment and use color scheme as the key path Make it private, give it a name of color scheme. Okay, so back to here. Let's move this. So actually, I forgot to add this invocation, handle and type gesture, passing the article. Okay, now for the background of the Mac OS for the article row view. I'm going to initialize a color using this NS color from AppKit App color. And then I'm going to check current color sch scheme where it is light using this ternary. If it is light, I'm going to return text background color. And else, if it is dark, I'm going to use this window background color. Okay. Before we build and run, I also need to make some slight modification for this grid item size here so currently this is passing this minimum of 300 and no maximum limitation this will cause an issue of truncation of the content of article row view in mac os as the user can resize the sidebar list so let's avoid this let's declare an additional private for grid items here with the type of grid, grid item array and then here let's just use conditional compilation so here let's just cut this for iOS, let's just use this grid items value and missing returns. I think we need to use else in here. And for the else statement, in this case, make OS, let's pass the minimum size as 272 and maximum size of 272. So we will limit the height, the width of this grid item to. 272 and make sure to pass this here with items okay now let's try to build and run okay okay this looks nice actually let's try to resize it okay nice still adaptive okay let's collapse this Looks good. Precise this divider. Okay. No issue with the layout. And let's try to change to top headlines. Okay. Everything's still good. Now let's try to 
change the color scheme here from the display preferences in menu bar let's toggle the light mode okay looking good here let's switch back to dark mode now let's try to click on one of the article it should open safari nice okay it's working good and now let's now try to click this bookmark button to bookmark okay here it changed this button to button image to fill it is working but we cannot still see here because we haven't implemented the bookmark view okay and for the share button it is currently not working because we haven't implemented it for mac os we'll implement that later now let's move on to the next task okay for the next task let's migrate the bookmark tab view here for the save menu item so from this action news folder just select the bookmark tab view inside the views folder drag it to the views folder inside the action news share and then make sure to check the action news map mac as the target membership but before we build and run i want to make some adjustment for mac os here let me use conditional compilation if os mac os so basically for mac os target i want to use this navigation subtitle this is only available on mac os and for the value i want to show the total current count of the articles the bookmark articles okay articles.com using sting interpolation okay now let's navigate to the sidebar list view here inside the view for menu item let's replace this text save inside the save case and return the bookmark tab view now sh we should be able to build and run okay let's bookmark another articles okay this one this one now let's click on this save menu item nice now the bookmark is shown here with three bookmark articles and here you can see the total count as the navigation subtitle inside the toolbar we don't need to make any adjustment here as you can see the bookmark tab view here is using the same article list view to render the content and now let's try to search here there's a search search field here let's try to search genshin okay nice it filtered correctly you throw okay looks good that's it for this task now let's move on to the next task but actually i think there there are still some ui issues here as you can see here previously we set this description text to have line limit of three but now it is only shown line limit of two let's try to fix this issue okay now if you get back to the article row view okay i think we need to set the spacing as zero here and manually adjust the padding between the text here for the title let me add a bottom padding of 8 and for the article description text i want to add additional length spacing here of 2 now let's try to build and run whether this will fix the issue okay now it looks nice here the description test now is rendered with line limit of 3 okay okay looks pretty nice now we can really move on to the next task okay so next let's uh, fix this share sharing button this is currently not working on macOS 
So to do that, let's navigate to the article row view and find the present share sheet method here. Here, let's add additional conditional compilation. Else if OS, make OS. So basically here we need to use the AppKit API and a sharing service speaker to show the share menu. And basically it requires the frame and the source view. To do that, first we need to retrieve the root view, the content view of the current window in focus. We can use nsapp.keywindow.contentView. And let's check the proxy, make sure it exists before we continue. Else we just return. And then let's retrieve the frame using proxy frame in global coordinate space. And let's initialize the service speaker and as sharing service speaker. It accepts this array of items. Let's pass the URL. And now let's just invoke share service speaker dot show method relative to the frame of the content view. For the preferred edge, let's pass mean y. Okay. Now let's try to build and run. Click on this share button. Okay. It shows the share menu. But I think the position is a bit off because the anchors is relative to the card proxy itself. So I think we need to fix this by making this anchor of the share menu relative to the share button itself. Okay, let's do that. First, we need to move this into a separate method. The share button, private func share button. It shall accept a proxy, which is a optional geometry proxy, and it should return a sum view. Let's cut this. Move it here, and here we need to use the conditional compilation for iOS. Just share button, passing the proxy of the card, and for Mac OS, we need to wrap it inside a, another geometry proxy. You can just use this uh, share button, passing the proxy. And for when we are using the geometry proxy, we need to, sorry, this should not be geometry proxy, it should be geometry reader. Okay. Proxy is the value that is passed here, this dollar zero. So when using geometry reader, we need to set the fixed size for the frame. And let's pass width of 16 and height of 16. We don't need to set the alignment. Okay. Now let's try to build and run. Let's click on the share button. Okay. This is shown perfectly now. It looks good now. But I think the position is a bit off here. Let's pass 20 the frame width and height okay now yeah this looks good quite good let's click okay as you can see here the share menu is anchored relative to this share button itself nice so now the share button works let's move on to the next task for the next task, we are going to implement context menu to the article row view. The user can trigger this by right clicking on the grid item itself. We'll implement three custom menu items, open in browser, copy URL link to clipboard, and toggle bookmark. It is actually pretty simple to implement in CPUI using the context menu modifier. But before that, let's declare a private var here. Give it a name of context menu and the type should be some view. 
so let's declare this as a view builder using view builder property wrapper and okay so now inside this property we need to declare all the menus using buttons so for the first button let's use this button seeing this title action for the title let's pass open in browser and for the action we can just use the shared ns workspace and then invoke open passing the article the article url for the second button let's pass copy url it's the title and here first we need to convert this article url using this ns past board writing let's cast this okay and then we need to retrieve the past board using the ns past board the general this is the shared password object used to use for general content and then we need to clear the current contents using this clear contents method and then finally we need to invoke password write objects passing the an array containing this url that we have declared before okay so for the third button this is the toggle bookmark button let's use a ternary operator to check whether the current article is bookmarked okay So if it is bookmark, we just return remove bookmark. If not yet bookmark, we just return bookmark. Okay. And now for the action handle closure, we just need to invoke this toggle bookmark for article. Okay. Now we need to pass this here so now we need to add this as a modifier here we are going to add it only for mac os and now let's declare it only for mac os for your info the context menu also is available to use for ios the user can trigger that by long pressing on the view but in our case, we are going to make this available on Mac. Okay. Context menu. Pass this context menu view. This one. Container for views. And then let's pass the context menu computed property that we created here. Okay. Okay. But before we build and run this. So actually, there is a build time error here. If we change the scheme to the iOS target here. As you can see here, there is this NS workspace it's not available in Mac OS in iOS target. So let's also wrap this to only available for Mac OS. Okay. Let's try to build again. Okay, now the build succeeded. Now let's change back to the XNS Mac scheme and let's try to build and run try to right click on the article row view okay nice this is the context menu that we created before first let me try this open in browser okay nice it works second one is this copy url let me select this one manchester united fans copy url and then let me open it in Safari. Pass this. Okay, nice. It copied the URL to the clipboard. And the last one is this bookmark. Let's click this. Okay, it bookmarks the article. And now let's try to remove the bookmark. Okay, it removed the bookmark. Okay, now we have successfully implemented the 
context menu that can be triggered using the right click nice now let's move on to the next task next let's implement the refresh toolbar button on the new step view to do this we just need to add conditional toolbar modifier for the mac os target let's navigate to the new step view.swift file and here we're going to add conditional modifier else if os mac os we just need to use this dot toolbar this one let's use a trailing closure for the view and then inside the toolbar content closure we just need to declare the toolbar item pass automatic for the toolbar item placement and for the content let's declare a button using action label for the action we just need to pass the refresh task method here okay and for the label let's just use a image with system name of arrow dot clock wise let's set the image scale to large okay this is it for the toolbar but i want to make some additional addition here so actually in the toolbar i want to add a subtitle containing the last surface date text here the time of the last surface date so to do that we need to navigate to the article new view model and we need to create a computed property last refresh date text with the top of string we can get the date from this fetch test token here this token property is a date this is triggered when we refresh the news and now i think we also need a date formatter let's create a file private let date formatter here okay and inside this last of rest date text let's set the date formatter time style as short and then we can just return the string last refreshed at and then use string interpolation that formatter string from fetch task token the token okay that's it for this last refresh the text computed property now we can just add this conditional compilation modifier for mac os navigation subtitle passing the article news vm last refresh the text okay that's it now let's try to build and run okay okay so as you can see here it is showing last refresh at 10 a.m and now let's try the refresh button it is located here on the right side of the toolbar let's click this okay it refreshing the content okay so this refresh button it, it is working as expected now let's move on to the next task for the next task it will be nice if you made this refresh news also available as menu bar command and can be triggered using a keyboard shortcut luckily this is pretty easy to implement by creating a custom command and using custom focus values key basically we need to make the new step view focusable and bind the refresh task method to the associated focus value key so to do this to do this let's create a new file inside the xia news map Okay, this will be only specific format. Give it the name of focus value plus refresh action. Here we need to import Shift UI. Uh, first, we need to create the extension for the focus value. And then inside, we need to create an internal struct named refresh action key. 
that implements the focus value key. Need to provide the tab alias for the value. In this case, it's going to be a void closure. Okay. And next, we need to define the computed property name refresh action that return this type and uh, avoid closure and it should be an optional and this will be computed so we need to provide the gather and the setter so basically for the gather we just need to use this self and subscribe it with the refresh action key dot self to get the value and to assign the value you can use this also and assign it with the new value normally this approach should work but currently as of the current release of Xcode 13 beta 3 there is a bug where when we try to get this sometimes we get a nil file value so until the stable version of Xcode 13 is released let's just create a little hack here so let's store it inside a file private and give it a name of reference action with the type of this void closure okay and to get it let's just comment this and and return the reference action and here also just comment this and assign this to this reference action property okay i believe apple will fix this in the final mac os 12 ios 15 release but for now this hack will work for our case okay now navigate to the new step view that swift and here we need to add this focus scene value key path only for the Mac OS compilation, we need to pass the reference action key path as well as the reference task method. This will enable this value to be assigned when the new step view is in focus or active. Now let's create a new Swift file named news command inside the XCR news Mac folder. This will only be specific for Mac OS target. And let's import Swift UI at the top. And let's declare a struct named news commands that conforms to the comments protocol. So the required property is a body uh, that returns an opac commands. And inside the body, we just need to declare this comment group. And let's just put it before the toggle sidebar button. And inside this comment group, we need to create our view. Let's create a struct and give it a name of body view. And inside this struct, we need to declare a property wrapper name focused value. For the key path, we need to assign it with reference action key path, make it private, and give it a name of reference action. The type should be an optional void closure. Okay. So whenever we use this property wrapper, focus value, and then we assign this, this will be stored in here. So here inside the body, to trigger this, we can just declare a button with the title of refresh news and for the action handle closure we can just trigger this refresh action closure okay and finally we just need to declare this body view in here let's try to build okay there there is no build error and for the keyboard shortcut we can use this keyboard shortcut modifier let's use this one for the key let's use r for the modifiers 
let's pass an array containing this command command key okay let's try to build okay build succeeded so in this keyboard shortcut so basically we set the key to r and the modifier to command key so this keyboard shortcut can be triggered by pressing command r okay now i think we need to go to the xl news mac app dot swift here and then let's declare this news commands below the sidebar commands okay now let's try to build and run okay so let's click on the view here in the menu bar nice there's this refresh news menu item now let's click this okay yeah it refresh the content now let's try to press command command r keyboard shortcut okay it works perfectly okay we have implemented the refresh task custom command here with the keyboard shortcut that's it for this task let's move on to the next task next we'll add the touch bar integration to the app basically we want to show all the menu items on the touch bar so the user can tap on the touch bar menu item to navigate so let's navigate to the content view inside the xian news map so here uh, in the navigation view we just need to add the focusable modifier and now the touch bar modifier and inside the closure let's declare a scroll view passing horizontal as the axis and now let's set the frame to frame width to 684 I'm hard coding this value as I cannot really find any API to get the width of the touch bar at the runtime. If you know how to do this, please leave a comment and tag me. Next, we need to add the touch bar item presence modifier. Passing required with the string. Let's pass menus. And then inside the scroll view, let's declare an h tag. Inside the h tag, we can just use the for each and first let's pass an array containing the menu item dot, dot save and then concatenate it with the category dot menu items okay so we are not actually passing the menu item dot search here as the our search interaction will be very different so we'll handle that later now let's just declare a button here passing the action closure and label for the action closure we can just assign the selection binding value with the item.id okay this will make the selection binding to navigate to the assigned menu item id for the label let's declare a label here using this title and system image and for the title let's pass item.txt for the system image let's pass item.system image okay that's it now let's try to build and run this okay so if you don't have macbook with touch bar you can just simulate the touch bar here by going to the xcode menu bar click window click touch bar and click show touch bar okay nice now the touch bar showing all the menu items that we created before looks good we can scroll this now let's try to navigate to save by clicking nice it navigate to the save uh, menu item let's change to business okay looks good and health okay so it is working perfectly so yeah we have implemented the touch bar implementation and now let's move on to the next task for the next task we are going to implement preferences window that can be selected from the menu bar 
In the preferences, we'll add buttons for the user to clear the save bookmarks and recent search history list. To begin, let's create a save UI view inside the XCI News Mac folder. Set these views. Create a save UI view. Give it a name of settings view. Let's remove this settings view previous as we don't really need it. And inside this settings view, let's declare a private struct for the for the general settings view. And we need to declare to environment object here. First one is for the article search view model with the name of search VM. And second one is for the article bookmark view model with the name of bookmark VM. Okay, let's also implement the body, required body property. Next, we need to add the method to remove all bookmarks in the article bookmark view model. We already have the remove all history method from the article search view model. So let's navigate to the article bookmark view model here. And let's declare a new method, give it a name of remove all history. Okay, so basically here, we can just clear this bookmarks array. By calling bookmarks dot remove all method, and to update the persistent store, this PLS data store, we just need to invoke this bookmark updated method. Okay, now we have this remove all history. Let's go back to the settings view to implement the body. So inside this general settings body, let's declare a form here, and in, let's add a modifier. First one is fix size. And second one is padding with the default value. And inside the form, let's declare a VStack. And then inside the VStack, let's declare our first H tag. And let's declare text with string search history data. And then let's set the frame, the width to. 150 and alignment as trailing and let's pass a button here with the title of clear all and for the action 100 closure let's just invoke search vm remove all history okay and let's set the button frame alignment to trailing Okay, let's copy this first H tag. And then we just need to change this to save bookmarks data. And then inside this button, we will trigger the bookmark VM, remove all history. I think we should rename this. It should be remove all history. It should be remove all bookmarks. Okay. Okay, now this looks good. Now let's go back to the settings view body. So let's put this into a tab view as the container. And let's declare the general settings view. Add a tab item modifier. Let's pass label with the title of general and system image of gear. Okay. And let's also limit the process window frame to width of 400 and height of 100 with alignment set as center. Okay. That's it for the settings view. Now let's navigate to the XCN News Mac app.swift here. So first we need to add the state object for search 
give it a name of search pm and the type should be article search view model and let's assign it using the singleton okay and now here inside the body we need to declare the second view which is the settings and inside the settings here we can just declare our settings view and let's make sure to inject all the environment object first one is bookmark vm second one is search vm so while working on this let's also add the environment object for the content view passing the search vm as this will be required next when we implement the search feature okay now let's try to build and run okay so first let's navigate to this bookmark menu item and then click on this action news from the menu bar as you can see here there is this preferences menu item click it okay so this is our preferences window first one is search history data second one is save bookmarks data so let's clear the bookmark data first boom it cleared all the save articles nice for now we cannot test the clear all for search history data because we haven't implemented the search feature okay now that's it for the custom preferences window now let's move on to the next task okay for the final task we are going to implement the search feature using the searchable modifier the interaction will be pretty similar to the mac os app store here the search bar will be located in the search bar list when the user focuses here it will show the suggestion as well as the recent searches list user can select from the list or just type the query manually for example i type xcode here and then we need to press enter to initiate the search and show the search results view and when the user selects the menu item here after the search result is shown we will clear this search bar field and remove the search result view okay now to begin let's navigate to the content view in the action news map so first we need to add the environment object for the let's make this private it should be search vm with the type of article search view model okay now here in the navigation view we just need to add the searchable modifier let's use this one for the text binding we can just use the search vm dot search query property and for the placement let's place it in the sidebar for prompt let's just pass a string search news okay now let's try to build and run first okay nice now the search bar is shown properly here inside the search bar list okay next let's add the suggestion view containing the suggestion keywords and recent search history list so here in the content view let's declare a private computed property private var give it a name of suggestion view with the type of opac view and here let's mark this with a property wrapper view builder so okay for the first section we are going to show a list of static keywords so let's declare a section using the content header here for the header let's just pass trending and for the section let's use for each pass an array containing keywords that you want in this case i'm going to pass swift btc covid 19 and ps5 ios 15 and for the identifier 
let's pass sal okay and now we need to just declare a text passing the text here the string and to make this works we need to use this search completion modifier passing the string okay let's try to build this first okay build succeeded now to plug this inside is searchable so there's actually the last parameter which is the suggestion fee that we can pass in this case i'm going to pass it using this trailing closure suggestion fee okay now let's try to build and run this okay click on the search bar field okay nice now the trending section is shown here let's click on it okay the search bar is updated but actually there is one bug so if you try to click here on top of this not on top of the text here it won't do anything so let's try to fix this navigate to the content view here and first we need to add the frame modifier set the max width as infinity and alignment as leading and we need to set a background a transparent color but in this case we cannot just pass color.clear it won't work so we need to pass color.black with opacity of 0 0.001 this will be pretty transparent and remember this the ordering of this modifier is really matters so it should be frame background and then search completion now run this okay click on the search bar now click on this row but not on the top of the text okay nice now it works perfectly good now let's add uh, the second section which is the recent search history list so for this we need to check the search vm story if it is not empty let's declare the second section with the content header here for the header let's pass a text recent searches and inside the section let's use for each passing the search pm dot history and for id you can just pass this soft key path and basically you can just copy this okay so as of right now we cannot really test the recent searches list because we haven't implemented the submit search feature to initiate the search so to initiate the search we can use the unsubmit modifier here so below the searchable modifier let's declare the unsubmit of the submit triggers will be search and the action for the action i think we should declare a private method to handle this let's declare a private method named search here and then let's invoke this search so inside the body of the search let's declare a constant named search query and then let's access the article search view model should be search vm dot search query this is the binding to the searchable modifier and then let's invoke trimming characters in white spaces and new lines and then we check if the search query is not empty we are going to add it to the search vm at history search query else if it is empty we just return from this method without doing anything and next we need to assign the selection binding here for a value with the menu item dot search dot id this will kick in the navigation to the search results view okay and finally the last thing is we need to trigger the article search view model search article async function to do this let's just trigger an async task sync and then await inside search pm dot search article okay now let's try to build this first okay 
here there's a warning and if you actually see there's a warning a lot of warning here so actually the async is deprecated and will be replaced by task.init so let's do it now task. okay now with this the user can just press enter to trigger this on submit modifier but before we run and test we need to make a slight modification to the selection binding proxy here. Basically, we don't want to assign this to the selected menu item in storage when the menu item ID is searched, as we only want to show the search view when the user is searching. So let's add a new stat property. Let's make it private and give it a name of is searching. The default value is of false. Okay. So basically here inside the setter, the binding, we need to check if the new value is equal to the menu item dot search dot id. We set the is searching stat property to true and just return. Okay. Else we set this to false. Okay. And in the getter. First, we need to check if is searching is true. We need to return menu item dot search dot id. This will trigger the navigation to the menu item search. Let's also add return here. And now let's try to build and run. Okay, so let's type anything to the search bar. Let me type Xbox and click enter and press enter. Okay, nice. As you can see here, the search result view is shown. And when I select another menu item here, okay, it's so a translation back to the new step view. But here it still doesn't clear the search field. Okay, now we just need to replace this to using the search step view. Okay, so let's navigate to our project here. So from the Axia News folder, we need to select this search tab view and then drag it into the xni shared views folder and then make sure the xni mac is checked here as the target membership okay now let's try to build and run looks like it failed here there is still some io specific api okay so let's try to fix this one by one so for ios we are going to use all the current properties and for the mac os we need to use this search vm as environment object it will be injected by the parent so let's change this to environment object and let's just pass the type okay and for searchable it will be now inside the sidebar list on mac os instead of this searchable inside the search tab view this will be only on ios so let's just change this if os this ios okay and then here for the overlay view so actually in iOS, let's just use this default one. But for Mac OS, I just want to show a progress view for the empty case. Okay. Now let's see. What else? Okay, the build succeeded now. But I want to add additional adjustment for for the Mac OS here, so for, the, for the navigation title, I want to show the current search query. So let's move this here, navigation title. And to show the current search query that is currently being searched, we need to make some adjustment in the article search view model. So let's declare a new published property, current search. With a type of string optional and here inside the search article async function before the do statement 
let's just assign this current search property with the search query okay now we can use this here so let's add else if os is mac os okay here we just add this navigation title so first let's just check the search vm dot current search it is nil we're just using the ternary operator it is nil we just return search else we return search results for and then use this search vm dot current search in string interpolation okay this is an optional but because this statement will all be executed if this is not nil let's use force on our value okay now we need to go to the sidebar list view in the xion news map and handle the view view menu item for search in this case we just use this search tab view okay and here we need to pass on disappear remember that we have to also clear the search bar when the user change back to the other menu items other than the search so here we can get the search pm do we have search pm here no okay let's inject this also using an environment object private far search pm article search view model here we can just set the search pm search query to empty okay now let's try so let's begin by searching xbox okay it shows this search results for xbox nice it shows all the articles related to xbox now let's see whether it's being added to the recent search history list nice here we can see xbox in recent search section let's select from the suggestion here etc okay it successfully search for btc nice COVID 19 okay all the search features are working as expected now finally let's try to navigate to the other menu item okay it cleared the search field text here but if you see here the search is still in fo on focus hmm. i think we need to handle this also so this is actually pretty easy to fix so basically for the search there's an another environment for the searchable so any view that is contained inside the searchable modifier we can just use this environment dismiss search let's make it private for dismiss search this is a closure so basically here i think we also need to trigger this dismiss search when the search tab view is disappearing to unfocus the search bar okay let's try again let's select ps5 and let's select save here okay nice now the search bar is unfocused and the search query is also removed when we select the another menu item okay and that's it for this video great job for you all we have successfully implemented mac os app for the news app from scratch there are so many new mac os apis that we have learned along the way such as the menu bar command touch bar context menu and building the ui that feels native on mac os encourage you all to also build and share your own mac os app i believe mac os has a really great feature for content creators and handling powerful productivity workflow. You can also download the completed project from the GitHub repository at the description below. And finally, let's keep the lifelong learning goes on. Thanks for watching.